So verse 4 says, Satan, who is, uh, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Did you hear that? Okay, they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You know, I, I got to just stop right there because we have to understand something, friends. That the world doesn't understand what's really going on. But we ought to be understanding what's going on. Now, we're not going to know all the integral facts and, you know, be able to point fingers and that we're not called to. But we should be inquiring of the Lord and we should know the spirits that's guiding the people. And we're called to be the ones that change our nation. Can you imagine if, if de denominationalism didn't get in and we stayed apostolic like, like God is? Denominationalism, hey, we're thankful for all the different denominations, but it, the, the name itself brings division. My Bible says Jesus, when he was praying for the church, right before he was going to be crucified, he was praying, he said, in John 17, he says, Father, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them. Let them be one, say one, one. as we are one. Now, do you think God ever, do you think they were ever not in oneness? The triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they work together. They're in one. They're in unity all the time. I don't mean that we can't have little differences in our doctrines, but we got to still join together and say, hey, I am not going to allow anyone to, 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 to sway me to attack my brother or sister in the Lord. we got to love them. But that don't mean we have to be silent on the tough issues on the things that are affecting our children, that are affecting our society, that are affecting our world. God is wanting us to be the light shining bright. He wants us to be the salt of the earth. The salt has flavor. What kind of flavor do you have? I'm just saying. And, you know, salt in those days, they didn't have ice. It was a preservative. It added flavor. It kept things well. Let me tell you something, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be a people that are not only going to share his word, his love, not only going to be people that walk in the presence, not only the people that are going to worship him daily, as my wife was saying earlier when we were receiving communion. I mean, do you get up in the morning and you say, Jesus, what are we doing today? Do you get up in the morning and start praising his holy name? Because you got another breath in your lungs. You got another opportunity to share the love of God, to receive the blessings of God before you go out about your day. I just want to encourage you with that. But verse 5, let's just go to verse 5. We're just going to keep going. Uh, you see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6 says, For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. So where is the light to shine? In all your hearts and mine. But that takes oil. Can I tell you something? We have to, got to get this right, friends. If we think, it's kind of like driving your car all week and say, ah, I'll wait till next week to put gas in it. You're going to be stuck somewhere because you ain't got no oil. You ain't got no gas. Been there, done that. Anybody else? You can't put off what you need. Can I tell you something? We all need more oil. Verse 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts 
But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. Woo! This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Yeah, we are like cra- uh, cracked jars of clay. And you know what, though? That's why we need more oil. Because I don't know about you, but I leak. Ah, man, I, I leak. Not only when I release it, because, uh, you know, a lot of it just, as you bring the light, it, it kind of just, it goes, right? It, it's, there's got to be, it's kind of like having, a, having a, 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 a candle or a, a lantern. You're going to have to use up that fuel to bring that light. Now, if you got a, a, a clay jar that's got cracks, guess what? You're going to leak even faster. So that's why you got to get in the presence of Jesus. You got to start to worship the Lord. You got to start to give Him glory. You got to start to inquire of Him. You got to start to pray. All of a sudden, you're going to start to find out as you study His Word, as you get in His presence, as you do the things that we're called to do, as we prioritize Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, first and foremost, Holy Spirit is going to equip us and empower us to be able to do what we're called to do. Amen? Come on. Verse 8, we are pressed on every side. Anybody feel that way sometimes? Man, it's like closing in everywhere around us, right? Uh, uh, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. Isn't that beautiful? We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Let me tell you something. If any of you are going through despair, I want to meet you after service because I got a whole lot of oil I want to just pour on you. I'm not talking physical oil. I'm talking about I want you to know that oil is made for anointing. And anointing breaks the yoke of a whole lot of folk. Come on now. Yeah. So, you know, there's these spirits. And and, and take your. I hope you guys are taking notes because here we go. We're going to get started. Are you ready? All right. All right. Number one, the ability to identify, recognize, and distinguish between various kinds of spirits that confront us. That's what we're going to learn today and this next couple of weeks. So it's the ability to identify. If you want to just put that, that's okay. If I can have that um, point. Uh, well, you don't have those points. I, these, are, these are different ones. But we'll have some other ones. So just put down the ability to identify. We need to be a people that know how to identify the different spirits that we're dealing with. Man, if we got a spirit of anger, call it for what it is. It ain't from God. If you got a spirit of fear, well, get closer to his perfect love because that casts out all fear. It doesn't say some fear. It says all fear. Why? Because we know if we're fearful that if we get closer to Jesus and God and our trust is in him, he's bigger than anything that we're facing or going through. Amen? Two. Two. Ephesians 6, 12, 12, it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits, say spirits, in the heavenly places. This tells us that our battle, where our battles lie, it's not with each other. But isn't that how the enemy always wants to trap us, always wants to deceive us? Don't you see it all around you? Hey, all you got to do is pick up the news. Hey, oh, this group is going against this group, and that group's going against that group, and that, but, but. I mean, it's just like, what? Get back to your word. If you're spending more time on the news than you are in your word, then you're probably going to have anxiety, and you're probably going to be fearful. Seriously. Hey, can I tell you something? Fear sells. And they, they want what sells. When you go t- tell people about all the good that's going on, like right now over in Maui, we've got Dr. Morocco's church, the King's Cathedral over there. Man, they just brought 200 people and gave them beds, gave them food, taking care of them. We're sending money over there. I got friends that are going flying over there to help. Why? Because they're, they're walking in the light. Come on, friends. But you think that's going to be on the news? No, they're just going to talk about all the, oh, anyway, I, I better not go there. <laughs> so 
So it, this is essential that we are equipped to handle spiritual enemies and wickedness. We've got to, see, if we're too busy fighting each other, that's a distraction to keep us from winning because we ain't going to where the real battle is. We need to lift the veil that covers the unseen spiritual world. How many people know that the enemy's always trying to do things undercover? He's trying to do it behind the scenes. And, 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 you know, and that's one of the words that God gave us last year, what there was going to be an acceleration of exposure to the evil. And because there's also going to be an acceleration of evil influencing our, our culture, our leaders, our, the world, I mean, all these things. So, so it, it's not to bring fear. It's bring, hey, let's be aware. Let's know how to pray. How many people know prayers of a righteous man availeth much? And how many people know that women, just so y'all know, you're part of that because man is mankind. All right? So don't think it's just for us guys, but guys, we need to be praying. All right? All right. Don't shout me down in here. Four, this is to enable us to see as God sees. You know, his ways are bigger than our ways, are greater than our ways. You know, we don't see like he sees, but he wants us to. God wants us to start seeing as he sees. He doesn't want us to be caught up into the worldly things so that our distortions and our we get sidetracked and we get, you know, uh, distracted by what's going on over here that we miss what's going on up there. Okay. Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, Samuel 16 says, 7, talks about God sees differently than man, for man looks at the outward. The Lord looks at the heart. And this will enable us to see below the surface. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we got to see below what's, what's in front of us. we got to go a little deeper. we got to understand that if the enemy is putting a veil over whatever he's doing, then we've got to see past and through that veil of deception so that we know the truth and the truth will set us free. Amen? But we got to understand that's, uh, and we're going to be talking about all these things. I'm just giving you some nuggets to prepare you for this next, we're going to go through the series for two months. Maybe more. Because it's so much. Because we want everyone here that watching online and everyone that's in this house, we want you to be equipped to know how to destroy the works of the enemy. How to be able to see the enemy coming before he gets right on you. We want you to be able to take an arrow and shoot it from a distance through your prayers rather than waiting and having a knife fight. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but I'd much rather take an enemy out from a distance. Okay. So this revelation will help protect us from the deceptions we see in different, and, 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 uh, and see the difference between what is authentic and what is counterfeit. Do you know, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 says that Satan himself transforms himself into the angel of light. That's deception. That's the counterfeit. Let me just say this. Do you also realize that Satan can't create anything? He's a created being. God is the creator. <clears throat> but here's the deal. He convinces us to do things. He tries to manipulate, to deceive, and, all, and then he tries to do this whole shifting things around. It's, it's kind of like those three little shells, the shell game. He tries to suck us in. Remember I always tell you guys, don't get caught up in what the enemy's doing. Be about what the Father's doing. See, the enemy's going to try to suck you into something that's nothing. Nothing that you need to be concerned about because you don't even have the truth until you inquire the Lord. Amen? So, five, this is important if we're going to walk in the light that exposes darkness. Woo! So that we can be people according to God's word, will, and ways. That we can be all about the Father's business that we can glorify the Father as we seek Jesus Christ and we allow Holy Spirit in us to be revealed 
to reveal Jesus through us. Are you all getting this? I'm going to package this up for a reason. Discerning the spirits, the discerning of spirits is not just evil spirits. Now, this is where I want you to take notes really good. So there are unclean spirits, which are demons. Unclean spirits. There's, I call them critters. There's a lot of critters out there. I can't tell you how many times I've had to cast critters out of people and off of people. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Seriously. I mean, and don't think that they ain't, hey, there might be some critters in this room. Don't be looking at your neighbor now. But sometimes we open the door. It's kind of like the Bible gives you some, some, some things to watch at. Don't allow your, don't go, don't go to bed with anger. Lest you open the door for the enemy. Lest you allow a crack in that door for him to get a foothold in. And guess what? If you stay angry long enough, well, that no good. He don't, do it. I ain't forgiven. No. And all of a sudden that foothold became a, it's like, oh, I got enough to come. I, got, I can come all the way in now. You just gave that critter an opportunity to get in on you. So true, friends. But God gives us everything we need in his word to be victorious, to be successful. And he loves us that much. He wants to reveal things to us. But it's up to us to pursue him. It's up to us to be in his word. It's up to us to be in his presence. Because when, when we're in the presence of the Lord, like we were earlier today, I don't know about y'all, man, but I, I got choked up because I felt the waves of glory coming through. It was beautiful. It is beautiful. But man, you also got to be people of worship. And worship is a, is, is, a, is a lifestyle. It's not just a song. Come on now. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not just a song. Okay. B, there is the spirit of man, which is the human spirit. There is the spirit of man, which is the human spirit. And then C, there are angels. There are good angels and there are evil angels or fallen angels. You all know that, right? D, the spirit of God is the best one. I just, I just got favoritism, you know, and it's truth, right? The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it's, the very important, it's very important to be able to discern the difference between Holy Spirit and the other spirits. Why? I just told you, Satan comes in to be, he wants to come in like he's the, he's the one. Like he's the light. Do you know how many people that profess to be Christians and all of a sudden they're pushing stuff that the world is pushing? They're coming into agreement with stuff that the world is, um, is doing? God said, hey, if you love, my wife just shared it today. If you love the world, then you, God, man, you don't have God in you. And I don't mean that you love the world like, hey, I love the tree. I love my car. That's not what we're talking about. Come on now. Come on now. I'm not talking about hating. I'm talking about if we think that we're going to love the things that they're trying to do to our kids, or we're going to think that we can go ahead and be in agreement because someone's struggling instead of praying for them and loving them enough to help them, that we're going to say, oh, that's okay. That's cool. Why Why don't you other folks jump in on that too? No, 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 no. Man, we got to be people that are the light shine bright so that when we go into the darkness, that, hey, that darkness has to leave when I walk in. I'm walking in the light. So we have to be the people that are confident in, in who we are and who God is in us so that we can be people that will speak the truth and love people right where they're at. But that don't mean we have to love that spirit that's trying to deceive them. We can come right against that. Amen? Okay, let's just keep going. Ooh, uh, our, advert, our adversary seeks to enchant, deceive, and delude at times. He tries to distract us from the point that we treat the Lord's presence as common. As common. Friends, it grieves my heart so much, and I've done it. But when we treat the Lord's presence as common... Can you imagine 
the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that, like my wife just spoke about, that gave his life for you and me, that was beaten beyond recognition, that made the choice. He could have called down a legion of angels to destroy them all. But because of his perfect love, he was one to get on that cross. And we're going to call that common. We're going to treat that as common. No. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Well, you say, well, when is that? Well, when you're like, uh, worship's going on, or, or maybe there's an altar call, and you're back in the back on your whatevers, or get, talking and laughing and giggling and just distracting others. Is that common? Yeah. Unfortunately, it is common in the church. I'm not talking about the world, friends. I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. Please don't hear it. I love you all. And I just know that we've got to prefer him more. We have got to choose to watch when we're in the presence of God that we honor him and give him what's due, that we bless him. The enemy will try to look to be something that he's not. He'll try to make you be something that you're not. I think about the girl with divination. Paul, he's walking, he's getting ready to go to prayer, and there's this little girl, this little girl's following him. And I don't know how little she was, but she was a young girl. And she had a spirit of divination. You know, that was... That was like, you know, you go down to the car reading place and whatever. I don't know what they do there, but they, it's the false prophets. Anyway, that spirit of divination was something that made, she's a slave girl, made her them money. But she's telling the truth. Now, wait, I want you to get this now. She's following Paul and, they, hey, here's the men that serve the most high God. And, and, and she's telling them truthful things. But you know what? What people don't understand is it's in the midst of the truth. She was trying to convince them because of the culture of the day. They thought, oh, that's just another, you know, that's just another person that has those spirits that we go to, the mediums and all that. That was a lie. You see, the enemy always tries to take a little lie and mix it with the truth so that he can try to feel like it's, it's, it's the truth. It's not. So Paul, as she's following and, and, and just giving these guys kudos, you think, well, why is he upset about that? I did when I first read it. I'm thinking, why is he upset that this, little, this girl's telling tell him and bragging on him? Because she, the enemy that's leading her, was trying to get the rest of the city to believe he's just the same as they are. And the ones that he serves is the same as the one they're serving. Are you all with me? So he turned around and he rebuked that thing and called that thing out of her and left her that day. Come on. Come on, friends. We've got to be able to. That's why we want to bring you through this series because we want all of us to be able to recognize where the true battle is so that we can take authority over it and call it out and change our lives, our family lives, our city for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Ah, if I can have the worship team come on up.